Something's not right with me. I'm having memory loops. There was a dispute. I was standing in the way of their plans. I was restrained. Shot with something. Who is this? I managed to escape. That's all I can remember. I must find some answers. Pilot requires further training. Activating automatic assistance. Stand by. Uh, assistance? I suppose I could use some pointers. Let's begin by shooting targets. Well, that seems easy enough. The next targets have shields. First, use the pulse laser to deplete their shields. When the shields are down, use the Gatling gun to inflict greater hull damage. Okay. Understood. Missiles on the next targets. Set a target lock before shooting so the missiles can home in. Sci fi dogfighter Everspace has been stuck in the early access nebula since September last year. But last month it turned up the warp crank and charged the star batteries to quite full. Zoom. It's a roguelike that our Alec took a peep at once before. But it's properly out now, so I'm going to tell you what I think. It appears it's as if an you're ready for the next stage. Gun swapping dance of asteroids target. and explosions. Aim towards it and hold I'd steady call to leave the boost orbit. And lasering and transit, missile launching drive ballet, requires a ballet. But that would phase. imply some finesse as on the part of the pilot, jump, whereas I, I have none. Nevertheless, it's a better than average dogfighting sim, uppercase dogfighting. Lowercase sim. The tale is straightforward. You're a clone with amnesia, because this is a video game, and you have to jump from sector to sector to earn flashbacks of your origins. A computer voice is there to help you and periodically fills you in on the half-hearted politics of the universe. Some reptile As you aliens can see from called the Oku gauge, did a, a war with humanity. Then the war ended but they still don't like each other. Completely. The story is delivered with nearby. voiceovers and moving sketches it, that appear you. between sectors doesn't matter much. You're here to shoot. Primary weapons? Let's see. Pulse lasers. Gatling guns. Fusion cannons, beam lasers, flak cannons. Okay, check. Secondary weapons? Light missile, heavy missiles, shield breaker missiles, another bigger, explodier missile. Check. There are also different modules and consumables that come in handy, like drones that will fight for you or recharge your shield, or mines that you can drop behind you, or anti missile point defenses or a time extender that will slow everything down for 20 seconds or that so and make any dialogue audio will be in the cluster. The Before leaving the orbit, it is recommended you explore the location for resources. But the not the story of them, are what drive you on. After warping into each new area you only have a limited time to blow folks up, loot their corpses, explore a little, rummage through derelicts, and slurp up any plasma, gas, credits or fuel lying around. Sooner or later a red blinking light and buzzer will warn you of imminent super powerful ochre ships, 
coming to have a go, because they think they're the hard enough. At some distance. Point your ship at the exit and warp away before they come and shred you to bits. You're greeted with an FTL style star map, letting you choose which system to hop to next. At the end of every ah, sector there's resources. a warp gate that takes you and to an weapon. entirely new but sector, don't have a and a new star map, it. with a difficulty high that this entails. Fuel is an important commodity in this respect, much more so than the ore, plasma, crystals and scrap that allows you to upgrade your weapons and craft new consumables or ammo. If your tank is empty and you try to jump on fuel, there is an outlaw ship incoming. I would advise activating ship. your weapon overdrive in order to prepare the for the encounter. The ochre are already there, and there's no time to look for the nearest abandoned petrol station. Why not press the maiden full guy button? I've gone bust a couple like of times to this guy's role, but I don't regret making the bet. And anyway, that's a poor metaphor. You never really go bust in this game because every death lets you cash in your chips. That's because you are able to upgrade your space alive between deaths, banking on the credits you clutched to your breast equipment. while exploding. Appears, however, this is done via an inter-death tech tree of sorts. I suggest advancing on to the top next of location. extra weapon slots or space for more consumables there are extra hull points, better credit drop rates, higher critical hit chance upgrades, fuel efficiency, and all different kinds of incremental stat boost. Earn enough cash and you can unlock new types of ship, a light, stealth ready fighter, or a heavy but shieldless gunship. One odd element of this menu is that each perk demands multiple injections of cash just to reach its next level, each injection more expensive than the last. This is good if you What's die and objective? want to spread your credits your all over the menu, and slowly building that? up a better it's ship, still a long way to go. but feels You'll like more of a rip-off if there. you're the type of player who likes to secure to one or two skills at a time. Even during my most wealthy cashing in periods I often came away feeling like I'd unlocked nothing particularly exciting or useful. A bump in stats. Not much more. You have extracted I've more earned materials. an extra centimeter of padding in the soles of my shoes, when what I really more. wanted was some roller wheels installed in the heel, or maybe those red lights that blink with every step. The roggy likeness of this is emphasized from the start then. This is not a space sim in the traditional sense. There's very little downtime between bouts of combat and you can't ignore the fighting altogether and survive by salvaging bits of old freighters. Or make a living by running sardines from one space station to another. It's an action movie set in space, not hard sci-fi you can indulge in while listening to Radio 4. Although, it does lift enough tricks from its brother genre to add some variety. Your ship's systems can get damaged, for example, altering the way you play and forcing you to fly differently. When your primary weapons get banjaxed, they fire slower, forcing you to rely on missiles, or encouraging you to try to hide enemies towards fighters of another human force called the Gimdan. B. By default, but you will get nasty if you steal their space oil. When your life support is damaged, your oxygen starts to slowly tick down, meaning you need to return it ASAP. Another resource, nanobots, is necessary to fix any broken system, but these also weld up both holes in your hull, so plying them where needed is often a balancing act. Jump gates are the primary method of travel between systems. These were built by Greedy and Brunt Prospects for their mining drones to reach areas more efficiently. Okay, thanks for the introduction. Now you want me to use this? It is the only way to the next sector, so, yes.
strange. Fragments of memories. Trying to make sense of them. I had managed to escape. I was weak and ill. My cells were deteriorating. A deadly poison. A cytotoxin. A slow, relentless, eating me away. There was a way to halt its progress, but it would take time. All I could do was set the wheels in motion. And await the outcome in stasis. A long, uncertain sleep. I saw myself again. Dying. This must be a memory from your original. Apparently a flaw in the transference protocol. The Eterna system was meant to filter such personal recollections. Wait, what are you saying? 